I recently read How to Take Smart Notes by Zuka Arendt. Each year, millions of people die with at least one book of valuable knowledge inside of them. Don't leave this world with valuable knowledge in your head, notebook, or note-taking application. Take what you've learned or are currently learning and turn it into something useful by adopting the Zettelkasten note-taking system. The Zettelkasten note-taking system was invented by German sociologist Nicholas Luhmann. Luhmann used this system to write 58 books and over 500 academic papers by averaging just six notes a day. At first, the Zettelkasten system will seem primitive because it's just a series of index cards and index card boxes. But the advanced way in which the system connects index cards and simplifies the way in which you write the first draft of your book, academic paper, business plan, or article makes this system remarkable. I've used this system for a few weeks now, and I've been surprised by its power. While studying and using it, I've discovered two primary reasons why the Zettelkasten system is different and better than most note-taking systems. First, the Zettelkasten system uses a two-stage filter to prevent mediocre ideas from diluting existing notes. And number two, the Zettelkasten system uses a bottom-up approach to deepen understanding and generate new insights. Advantage number one, the two-stage filter. Capture interesting information from books, lectures, articles, or podcasts, and interesting ideas that come to your mind throughout the day. Then, later in the day, review the notes you've captured and convert a select few into permanent notes. Let's go over both stages in more detail. Stage one, capture literature notes and fleeting notes. When making this book summary, I gathered what the author calls literature notes by highlighting passages in my ebook reader and extracting them into a note in Evernote. I also captured sections of online articles that discuss the Zettelkasten system and put them into separate notes in Evernote. Over the past three days, I randomly had ideas about the Zettelkasten system, like what analogies I would use to explain the system, and captured those ideas in a series of fleeting notes in Evernote. Now, I use Evernote, but you can capture literature notes and fleeting notes in any note-taking application you choose. May it be Apple Notes, Google Keep, Notion, or in a physical notepad. Capturing fleeting and literature notes is like collecting interesting artifacts on a hike and putting them in your backpack to look at later. Stage two, create permanent notes. Once a day, preferably at the same time every day, go through your metaphorical backpack of literature notes and fleeting notes from the past 24 hours and determine which notes you should convert to permanent notes. Here are two criteria for converting a note into a permanent note. Criteria number one, does this note produce a similar level of excitement as when I first captured it? Many ideas will seem revolutionary in one context, but mundane in another. I often have brilliant ideas in a caffeinated state at a coffee shop I love, but later find out when I'm at home and the caffeine is worn off that the ideas were nothing special. Criteria number two, does this note add value to other permanent notes? You might capture a great idea, but if that idea does not seem critical to your project or does not improve your understanding of the topic you're researching, you should not waste time converting it into a permanent note. Now, if an idea in your literature notes or an idea from your fleeting notes meets those two criteria, make it a permanent note by rewriting it on an index card. I like to use four by six index cards. When you rewrite a note, aim to improve it by connecting it to what you know. By finding ways to connect new ideas to existing ideas, you expand your web of knowledge, deepen your understanding, and boost your creativity. As Steve Jobs said, creativity is just connecting things. Handwriting notes on index cards forces you to slow down and clarify your ideas. And since index cards are space constrained, you must express ideas in as few words as possible, which will save you a bunch of time when you go to write and edit your first draft. Now, the second advantage of the Zettelkasten system is its bottom-up approach. Most people take a top-down approach to writing by outlining their book, article, or school paper, and then gathering information. But having a structured outline too early discourages you from exploring ideas outside of your structure and will promote confirmation bias. The Zettelkasten system uses a bottom-up approach by getting you to follow your curiosity, generate a list of keywords as you go, and organically grow an outline over time. This bottom-up approach to researching and writing is like improvisational sketch comedy. The process is more engaging and creative, and the result is surprisingly good. 
Adopt a bottom-up approach by adding three things to every permanent note. A location code prefixed to the title, a list of keywords in the top right corner, and links to permanent notes in the bottom right corner. When you prefix every permanent note title with a location code, you make it easy to reference your notes later on. The first note you add to your Zettelkasten system will have a one prefix to its title, and your second note will have a two prefix to its title. But if your third note builds off the first note, it should go between notes one and two and have the code 1A prefixed to its title. Now, if you have notes 1A and 1B and wish to insert a note between those two notes, it will have the code 1A1. And if you insert a note between 1A1 and 1A2, its code will be 1A1A. Notice a pattern? Now let's talk about keywords. Keywords are like Twitter hashtags in that they group notes together and are used to quickly find relevant notes. Aim to add one to three keywords to the top right corner of every permanent note. Identify keywords by asking yourself, what one word or phrase relates this note to existing notes? When I made this summary, a few keywords were permanent notes and bottom-up approach. When you come up with a new keyword or phrase, put it on your master index located on an index card at the very front of your index card box. The master index includes keywords and phrases with location codes like 3A1 that act as entry points for specific topics in your Zettelkasten system that will be useful when you're looking to insert new notes into your system. And lastly, note links. A new permanent note may have many potential friends in your Zettelkasten system. For example, if a note could fit nicely behind note 12A1, but it also relates to notes 2B1 and 24B, don't spend too much time debating where the note should go. Simply put it behind 12A1 by giving it the code 12A2 and write down the location codes for related notes in the bottom right corner of the note. These links will be helpful when you go and write your first draft. Finding links to notes in other parts of your Zettelkasten system will expand your web of knowledge and spark new ideas that will further improve your book, school paper, or article. To summarize, Start by capturing fleeting notes and literature notes in a mobile note-taking application. Then, once a day, convert a select few fleeting notes and literature notes into permanent notes by rewriting them on index cards in your own words. Then connect new notes to existing notes by adding a location code, keywords, and links to other permanent notes. Continuously update your master index with keywords and use your master index to outline your first draft. Then, when your research phase is over, Go through your Zettelkasten system sequentially, one card at a time, and effortlessly write your first draft. That was the core message that I gathered from How to Take Smart Notes. This is a great book to understand the Zettelkasten system and advanced writing and learning techniques. I highly recommend it. If you would like a one-page PDF summary of insights that I gathered from this book, just click the link below and I'll be happy to email it to you. If you already subscribed to the free Productivity Game email newsletter, this PDF is sitting in your inbox. If you like this video, please share it. And as always, thanks for watching and have yourself a productive week.